Today we made a house map that was designed specifically for an assassination. We made this map as part of a greater quest which already has a video on the channel but you could use this house map for anything really. With that said, let's go straight to me explaining the core idea for this map. We wrote a quest where the party are able to assassinate this figure and it's gonna be a pretty simple assassination. They're gonna be inside their house. It's gonna be suggested they do it at night. So it's gonna be stealthing into a house and killing an NPC. So what we need to do is more or less just create a fun two-story house. But while we're doing it, there's gonna be that added element of we need to find interesting ways that we can maybe move terrain or you know have little pathways to the bedroom where they are or into rooms, maybe secret doors that the party can maneuver through, things like that that make it more than just your regular two-story house building and make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more varied for the explicit purposes of an assassination. And I'll be honest, I've never made a house for a, the explicit purposes of an assassination. So we'll see how it goes. Standard practice. The first thing we needed to do was pick out a house on the map where we wanted the mayor to live, the house which we'd be creating a map for and use that for inspiration. But basically, yeah, whatever building we pick, and this could be an interesting one, whatever building we're gonna pick from here, we're gonna try emulate. And if there's none that we love, oh, this is a fun one. This is a fun one. With our house pick, we spent time, as always, spacing out and planning the structure. The main choice we made during all of this was deciding to split the house. The top two floors would be where the mayor roams, while the bottom floor is where their live-in butler lives. Also, placing the kitchen and cellar down here as well. To represent this divide, we chose classic wooden walls for the bottom level and chose fancier Victorian walls for the top two. This would be followed through with the tiling as well. I think this division makes particular sense for this house as the main entrance starts on the second floor. So we can have it narrativized that the mayor never goes to the ground floor, which contains all the work related stuff to do with the house. A metaphor for the hierarchical class structure, which they believe in and actively reinforce as the leader of this town. I also like trying to have rooms contain different tiling when possible as it brings nice individualization to the rooms. And I pulled maybe my favorite using one brush stamp for something completely different in one of these rooms. But I don't mind it being like a fancy wood. I think this might be too fancy and I think it's probably gonna work better something that's like a little tiled, even if it's a little basic. But I mean like what do, let's actually do some research. Wine cellar, let's, what, let's see what the floors go in wine cellars. So this is wood, wood, okay. Okay, some tiles there. Ooh, looks like some big, I don't know, limonoling slabs or whatever, wood, tiles. Okay, so we've got some different options. I think let's lean on some of these things and let's test out, ooh, hay light. I mean, this might work, honestly. I mean, it's maybe, let's go with Hey Dark, but this is kind of the energy, right? Yeah, I think that kind of actually works as like what you would expect in a wine cellar. So that's very, very cool. Well done me for figuring that out. After using hay to represent the speckled floor of a cellar, it was then time to shift focus to the rooms themselves. The bedroom sizing was a little bit too funky fresh for me, so I ended up adding a storage cupboard just to make the space feel more natural. And strangely, this would be probably my favorite room to decorate. I've never made a storage cupboard before. I've made storage rooms and taverns and castles, but never a small room for a house. And I wanted to give it that homely energy. Let's see if there's anything to actually put inside it because my big question is, I don't know if there's anything that's gonna really fit. So we've got a bucket, what a start. Great, we have a bucket. That's gonna be pretty good. We can put a couple crates in here, but I wanna find something a little bit different from just, you know, crates. I'd immediately get distracted and start working on the cellar, which I kept pretty simple. Some wine barrels, some other barrels, and a little table with a water skin and apple. Back to the much more important and captivating storage cupboard, I would end up throwing in a bunch of random items that I'd basically never used or even seen before. I don't know if they're new, or I don't know if I've ever clicked on them, so I've never seen paint buckets before. I've never seen the boots before, maybe just because of 
gone past my eyes, bundle of sticks I've never used, so it's a bunch of things that I've actually never used before. With two rooms more or less complete, we strolled down the hallways to make ourselves a snack, but golly gosh, there wasn't even a kitchen to grab a snack from, so we'd need to create that first. And I think we have build out sort of the accoutrements of this room, and I'm really happy with them all. Um, and I think there's sort of like some good narrative going on here as well. Like, you know, we have our wine cellar and, um, you know, then we have our little bottle of wine over here. We have some like carrots and there's chopped carrot there. You know, there's an apple and a, and a wine skin here. I think it's just making it feel a little bit lived in. Meanwhile, this is like a pretty basic kitchen, definitely using tool uh, tricks that we've learned before. You know, we have our sink and our stove and we have our little cutlery box, a pile of plates you know, some pots and pans there, food in the process of being cooked. Um, and then, yeah, we got some cupboards and it's, it's nice and simple. And then of course we've got our storage area. I got out from all the map making, it was time for a nap, but the gods of unfurnished architecture would strike again and aghast, no bed could be found. So it was time to make the butler's bedroom. Before we made too much progress, I'd discover something entirely new. And something I do want to check, I'm pretty positive there's no windows. Apparently there are. I don't think I've put a window in a single place I've ever made. But today, I'm gonna try to use windows. Uh, it's bold, it's beautiful. The audience are cheering. Um, but I'm gonna try to slide them in. I guess they go in the walls. Does it, I'm just checking, does that work like that? Not really, to be honest. It looks a bit dumb. Um, so, fuck. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll keep working on it. I'll keep working on it. Back in bedroom land, we'd also add a small study-esque and lounge room-esque area to indicate that the butler hangs out and lives in their bedroom when straight vibing, rather than living in the rest of the house. We'd also select nice-ish, but not overly ornate furniture as a continued demonstration of the wealth divide between them and their upstairs overlord. Before rising up and showing this entitled mayor what's for, we'd work on the little preview in the corner, which would be jankier than our other iterations of it. To avoid the preview, you looking kind of shit, we would do a couple things to make it look better. Firstly, to differentiate the underhang grass from the surrounding grass and the preview grass, I'd make it cobblestone, even adding that onto the town map. Next, I'd add text of the mayor's house over the stamp to reiterate that this stamp exists outside the rest of the map. The last step in the de awkwardification process would be instead of using the grass texture surrounding the house that appears on the town map, I'd surround the stamp with a black brush to even further exemplify its existence in the void. These three tactics together would work pretty well to make it look natural on the map, but would also be really important for the players during the quest. I think it looks a little bit awkward, but I, I think it also looks pretty good. And that I, I the reason that we want this map, this house on the map so specifically, and we don't want to just like leave it, is because if the party are breaking into this place and doing an assassination, then I think understanding the exterior of the house, even though it should be sort of clear through the interior, is going to be really important for them. So if it's just this, say, and you're just sort of looking at this map, it might not be clear like, hey, you can break in through here or that like the second floor like has a bunch of little like balconies and stuff you can jump onto. But if you go here, it's like, oh, we could probably walk up here, climb across, jump on there, break into the top floor and then do the assassination, you know, or it, I think it becomes really clear that you can sort of go underneath and there's a door there. The door's kind of there. There's there are these other options in which the party can go about doing this assassination. And I, I think that's going to be really important for the creativity and the imagination of the party to come through. These are some of the things you have to sort of think about when making maps. It's like, do you sacrifice the overall quality of the map to make it easier for the party to actually understand how the, the building looks and how they can operate within the world? And if, if you can achieve that of like, oh, I know how to do something better, then that's an absolute success. And, and that's why we make maps. So it's not a real big deal that it looks slightly awkward. With the preview in the bag, it was now time to venture upwards to put this home owning mayor in a bag of their own. A bloody body bag, that is, in case that wasn't clear. You know, because this quest is about assassinating the mayor. 
Get it? That's good comedy. Before furnishing this floor, I dived in on the window adventure. While on the wild and wacky ride of walls you can see through, I realized I had neglected to add a sunroom. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, like that is what windows look like. I mean, how big do we think the windows would be? And I keep flicking back here when I can just sort of zoom in down here. Um, yeah, there's windows on the side of the house, windows on the side of the house. This does have a little sunroom that I haven't really addressed. Fuck. Um, and it's gonna go unaddressed, to be honest. It's going to go unaddressed. Um, unless what I do is I move Having fixed the map, the enduring window edition adventure would continue. And windows are hard. I mean, like we are, we are just like trying new things, trying to like incorporate windows into the mix. And it's going okay. It's proving to be a challenge most definitely. Um, but it's like, that's fine. Like I, I'm all for challenges. Like I want to be tested. I want to be pushed and I want to be like, trying new things and this is this is good so yeah we're going to experiment here in my window creation fun i discovered that there are double windows which work really well for the sunroom i also experimented with some different styles one style with the square nubs at the end of the windows would act as the end of the walls and one where they'd sort of just exist on top of the rest of the walls i think both have their visual merits and can be used in different scenarios but i don't know if i was sold completely on either one i think they work well here but i'm definitely going to continue to mess around with windows to see if i can find something i really like zippity zoppity it was time to place the outside staircase to the toppity. And by toppity, I mean the middle floor, which is when I discovered I could do something I didn't know you could do when trying to get a half size rail. And then we'll add it here. And that's gonna be an entirely different size. Actually, is there a way? And this is where we can do the, see if masking works. Is there a way to like, cut them in half. In short, no. Or at least I couldn't find anything about it. But this is the solution I found. I feel like there has to be a way to cut the stamp in half. There's just got, there's gotta be. There's gotta be. Um, advanced settings. Transform. Ooh. Okay. Height. Oh, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Transform height. Hmm. It's a little squished, but I didn't know you could do this. I didn't know you could do this. Obviously it's a little squished and not an optimal solution, but it's very useful to know you can change just the height or width of objects. With the railing in place, I moved to the discussion of interior design choices. But I think the reason I'm leaning a bit more on darker is because um, this is sort of dark floors. And I think, you know, over here we've had it's lighter floors. It's this classic wood. So using this like lighter desk, this lighter bedding, this lighter chair, all of that stuff, sort of fits that thing but for down here using like this dark green I think it fits in better with the sort of rusticness um and the interior especially with the walls I think like the walls are a bit like more decorative they've got more going on and in turn uh we're gonna sort of match that with the color scheme I made the area here a small study on one side and a little lounge on the other I wanted to keep the color theme and the wealthy presentation of the mayor especially in contrast with the butler this idea of representing the energy of the house and the nature of the people that inhabit it would follow through the interior of the dining room and we're going to do the exact same thing when we make this like dining table in the sense that I think you know this can be a little bit of an entertainer like this can be someone that is schmoozing is schmousing is is doing that sort of, you know, I'm, I'm working the room um, sort of thing. And they can have like quite a big dining room or well, that can be quite a prominent feature because they're trying to get reelected. They're trying to like get the people in. So we can have quite a big dining table and I don't mind the dining table being the biggest feature of, of the entire house in the sense of it's like their main priority is, uh, 
to actually sort of like have people come over to like influence and to get people to like vote for them and to get people to like be in their on their side so having the main room of the house be that and having the study kind of in the corner and a little like whatever the little lounge area in the corner as well I think that makes a lot of sense of like who this type of person is right what do they prioritize they don't prioritize necessarily the work they prioritize the veneer of you know talking to people getting them on side being a politician in that in that sense um yeah of this i would add a piano in the room to indicate that they have light background atmos while they entertain guests i also lobbed in a fireplace to line up with the chimney in the stamp after entirely forgetting to put the staircase into the top floor, I decided on having a spiral staircase to the bedroom. Incarnate does have a spiral staircase stamp, but I wasn't too sold on them. So I rejigged them to something that I think worked a little better. With the second floor looking toasty ghosty, we moved to the place where the victim is going to be murdered to death. Starting off where any murder location should, the sunroom. My favorite thing I did here was get a box and make an ad hoc flower bed with it. There's honestly not a ton to say about this room and I didn't even really say anything about it while creating it. I swung in all the standard fancy furniture you'd expect this guy to have, trying to pick a design scheme which looked genuinely nice, all the while talking a chat about their various campaigns. With the last room complete, we went through adding a few touch-ups, like a little shelf in the dining room with decorative items, just because that's the sort of random bullshit rich people have in their dining rooms. And with that, we were donezo. Awesome. Wow. Great map. <laughs> um, I'm really happy with this. I think it's turned out super, super well. This was a really fun map to make, and I'm glad I tried to do some new techniques because this meant I not only ended up with a really cool map, but I also gained a bunch of skills, like how to integrate windows into houses or the fact you can change the height and width of stamps. If you're keen to use this map in your campaign or you want to have your party kill the douchebag mayor that inhabits this abode, then all the resources to do that are available on my Patreon. Or maybe you want to just go to there to support the channel, which is greatly appreciated. And thank you to everyone who has already done that. If you want more D&D content like this, subscribe to the channel, check out the Twitch to get in on the hot map making action live, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye!